Good morning. Thank you very much for coming to the Senate Democratic Press Availability. I'm Senator Berta Gardner. I represent in Anchorage, Spinard Midtown, and the UMED District. And I'm joined this morning by Senator Wilikowski, who represents East Anchorage, and Jay Bear. He's with us. Also, Senator Tom Beckett, representing downtown Anchorage, Fairview, and Mountain View. And Senator Donnie Olson from Golovin, who's representing northern and western Alaska. And we're here to talk about a basic need, which is a need for safety in our homes, in our communities, um, in our state. We have a constitutional right to safety, and it's, a, it's uh, very important to everybody. And we're hearing an awful lot about crime wave across the state. So just this week, my home here in Juneau was broken into and my husband and I were asleep in the house with the dog. Nobody woke up and we just, when we did wake up, we found that my wallet was stolen and some other things. And it was not a scary situation. We didn't feel that there was a threat of violence there. Um, and even had we awakened, I don't know that we would have been afraid of bodily harm. But when this happens to us or to anybody we know, we have to wonder why What's going on here? How can we prevent it? What's the appropriate response? And for some time, some people, it's, it's a very threatening, dangerous time. Um, Senator Begich, you have some comments to add to this? I do. You know, um, I, I don't think it's, a, it's any mystery to folks that Alaskans don't feel as safe as they used to. And there's reasons for that, and there are a number of them, which we're going to be talking about here today. Primarily, those reasons do relate to our consistent level of cutting of the services and prevention services as well as the uh, prosecutorial and, and uh, crime prevention services that we've experienced. But they also include, of course, the opiate epidemic, which we're trying to address. Uh, just this week in the Senate HES Committee, we talked about the Health Committee, Health, uh, Health and Social Services Committee. We talked about the importance of prevention, the importance of doing and investing more in prevention around the opioid issue, but we're not you know, following that up with concomitant investments of resources for that. Uh, clearly, economic hard times has, has a direct impact on that. I've been, over 30 years, I've worked in juvenile justice and delinquency prevention issues all around the country. And the one correlation we know is when economic times are tough, crime goes up. In particular, violent crime goes up. There have been recent stats that show some of the, the burglaries or other rates are down a little bit, but violent crimes are up. I had my staff prep uh, just a little example that shows you know, we had a little dip in 2000, 2005, but now we're back up to historic highs of violent crime in the Anchorage area. That th these, these crimes are directly related to d reductions in law enforcement, which thankfully the, the mayor of Anchorage and the assembly are working on now. But they, they also are really personal to me, and they're personal for two reasons. The first is, you know, uh, crime is in my neighborhood. I live in downtown Anchorage, uh, 100 feet from my front door earlier this year or, or late last year. There was a murder that occurred right there on the street, so if a drug deal gone bad, less than 1,000 feet from my house, there was uh, uh, two of the victims of the serial killer were killed in Valley of the Moon Park, and eventually uh, a law enforcement officer was wounded in, in an effort to uh, take down that same serial killer, and that was less than a mile from my house. This is personal, this is local, this is real. But it's not just about whether I feel safe or don't feel safe, it's our constituents don't feel safe. When I, um, I look at what, what we are doing and what we're doing right, one of the strengths of SB 91, and I know Senator Coghill and the Judiciary Committee, which Senator Wilkowski sits on, are doing a great job right now in looking at that bill and determining what needs to be tweaked with it, and they're moving that forward. That's one of the things that we need to do. But the other thing that came out of SB 91 was a desire to invest resources in our uh, uh, invest resources in our treatment programs and our prevention, and that just simply hasn't been done yet, and it needs to be done. We can't prevent all crime, but we have to have a system that actually protects us from crime. One of the things uh, I always carry on my little pocket constitution, there are two clauses in here around public welfare and public health. That's about safety, and there are shell clauses in our constitution that say that if we have any responsibility here, we have a responsibility as a legislature to ensure the public's safety. That is uncontrovertible, and that is our job. This is where the buck stops. With that in mind, and with, with knowing specifically 
uh, about some of these issues that have bothered us and, and, and that, are, that are bringing us together here today. I want to turn it over to Senator Wilkowski for some more specific detail on what we're talking about and how we think we can address these issues. Thank Senator. you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, well, certainly my district has uh, not been exempt from the crime problems that we've seen throughout the state and throughout Anchorage. Uh, just uh, about a mile from my house, we had a murder uh, just within the last couple of weeks. And uh, I hear from constituents all the time about uh, rising uh, so-called nonviolent crime, thefts, but also vi very violent crime. And it has been rising for years. And uh, we've heard uh, some people have placed the blame squarely on Senate Bill 21 or Senate Bill 91. Uh, this bill uh, just went in effect in uh, July, and uh, we know crime has been rising since before that time. And uh, much of Senate Bill 91 has not even gone into effect yet. There's no doubt about it. There are parts of Senate Bill 91 that uh, need to be fixed, and we are prepared to work with the majority to fix those parts. Uh, the provisions cutting jail time for Class C felonies needs to be fixed. The provision for uh, turning certain misdemeanors into infractions need to be fixed. We've heard stories. Uh, you know, I think we all agree that we want to try to rehabilitate people and get them on the right track of, uh, in life. And when they make mistakes, we should re uh, extend a hand and, and try to help them uh, correct their lifestyle, fix, fix th their, their ways. Uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing, though, is with uh, s some of the provisions getting rid of misdemeanors and turning them into infractions, what has happened is you have a certain very small percentage of people who are going into stores, for example, and stealing things. And instead of uh, getting having the threat of a misdemeanor and going to jail, they simply get a, a fine. And uh, they know that they'll never pay the fine, and they go back the next day and they commit the same uh, theft again. And so uh, we are committed to working uh, to fix that. Uh, I, I have spoken with law enforcement officers. I've spoken with police in my, in my community about uh, potential fixes, and we are all committed to fixing the problems that exist in Senate Bill 91. Uh, we know that drug and alcohol abuse continue to be a major factor in the rising crime. We've heard the statistics over the years. They're shocking. Ninety percent of all the crimes that are committed in the state of Alaska are drug and alcohol related. Ninety percent of all the people in the correction system have a substance abuse problem. Forty-five percent of all the crimes that are committed are committed by people that have some sort of mental health issues. One of the major things that, uh, uh, that we think is a good thing about Senate Bill 91 is the reinvestment of funds. And so we are committed uh, this session to working with the majority and, and seeing that these funds truly are reinvested towards uh, rehabilitation, towards uh, treatment for those with mental health issues, towards drug and alcohol abuse. We think that's critical and those, that's something that we as a caucus, I think, uh, will absolutely push. Uh, in Anchorage, I think the uh, other issue with public safety has been the cuts to the police department. Uh, we're very happy to see that uh, the, those have been turned around. We've had several police academies, and, uh, and so I think uh, a major concern is being dealt with in Anchorage in that regard. But, but there's another problem that has not gotten much attention at all uh, on the issue of public safety. We had, uh, and, and when, which appears to be a very significant factor in the rising crime throughout Anchorage and throughout Alaska, and that is uh, the testimony that we heard from the Attorney General, Jana Lindemuth, last week. Uh, she testified that um, over the last three years, the criminal division of the Department of Law was cut by 31 positions. That's uh, combined staff and, and prosecutors. In 2015, before Senate Bill 91 took effect, those cuts forced the Department of Law to prosecute 6% fewer cases brought by law enforcement compared to the previous year. In fact, according to Attorney General Lindemuth, uh, the staffing cuts have resulted in 7,000 fewer cases being prosecuted between 2014 and 2016, 7,000 fewer cases. That's uh, uh, due to staffing cuts, thousands of criminals were set free and not held accountable either through fines, treatment, jail time, or other penalties. This is unacceptable. This has uh, contributed, we believe, uh, to the deepening concern that Alaskans have over public safety. It's just simply unacceptable, it needs to be fixed. Uh, today we sent a letter which we'll have available for you to the governor asking him to restore the uh, uh, lost uh, cuts that have uh, that have happened in the uh, Department of Law to the prosecutor positions. And, and we stand ready to assist him and, and the majority in any way we can uh, to get through uh, those cuts, uh, to get those cuts restored. These are tough financial times. We, we all know that. Uh, but the last area that we should be cutting is public <laughs> safety. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Senator Olson, who will talk about uh, what he's experienced in, uh, in rural Alaska, in his community. Thank you, Senator Wolikowski. 
Certainly, as we look at the consequences of public safety and the public safety cuts that are currently in place, it's very, very concerning uh, because not all, because those, those cuts just don't affect the people in Anchorage and the urban areas where you've got the news, the, where they make the news at night. But they're, they're, I, I feel like they're disproportionately um, affecting people in rural Alaska, in my district in particular, who already have to do to make do with even less than they've had before. And I'd like to bring up some some examples of that. In my district, there have been very negative repercussions for what's gone on in, in the recent past due to the cuts. In particular, the VPSOs, uh, the village public safety officers that are the first line um, of defense for many of the people in rural Alaska that the communities that do have it, those positions a number of years ago had 121 positions that were available. They're down to 78 uh, people that are that are out there providing this first line of uh, defense against the, the people in the community. Uh, you, if you look that on on top of the troopers, the troopers now uh, are having to go ahead and live within their budgets that have been cut significantly, and those have not allowed them to come out in a timely manner to some of the crises that have happened in, in the communities. And there have been real crises out there. Um, we can't forget and we do not forget some of the lessons that have been learned the hard way with troopers blood riding them on the tundra. The two troopers that were, gave up there, you know, were killed there in Tanana uh, is a significant thing that woke us all up. and and made us aware of what's going on, the VPSO that was killed down in Manakotic in, in that area. So as we look at those cuts, they are very real. They are very, I mean, they, they affect people's lives directly. We look at other things that are like the Nome Youth Facility, which is the model institution for uh, the state of Alaska. It's not just threatened, it's gonna be shut down unless there's some type of funding mechanism to put it back in place. You look at things like prisoner transport, where you have child molesters that are so rampant in rural Alaska, and some of the violent criminals that are out there. We just had a murder murderer sentenced in uh, the, that came from the next the murder that happened in the next town from where I come from, Golovin, who was just sentenced. So these are these are things that are you know very they, they cut you right to the soul. As you look at some of the things that were pointed out even yesterday with the. Chief Justice's comments about cutting magistrates, we realize that the caseloads may not be the most they have around, but there still are real criminals that are out there with lives that are affected in a negative manner where uh, bad things can happen. And so with that, I would like to go ahead and uh, not lose focus that rural Alaska is paying a definite and hopefully will not pay a disproportionate part to these cuts that are there. Thank you. Senator Olson, did you want to talk about the problem with trooper tra transports and people not being held accountable because of delays? Oh, sure. A as we all know that the, the, the Anvil Mountain Correctional Center is the uh, regional incarceration place there in, in northern and western Alaska. And so when prisoners from outside the, outside the area are coming in to be charged, they many times come to, come to Nome. And these transports that are getting fewer and fewer because they're waiting till they get a full load of people. There's a timeline that you have to follow, and if those waivers, if, if uh, those guidelines aren't followed, then you go ahead and start running into the uh, the fact that some of these criminals can be let go and will be let go because of they need to be they need to have due process served in a timely manner. Where it really 